Gloria al Señor. Gloria al Señor. Gloria al Señor. Aleluya. Gloria al Señor. Hay poder en Cristo. Aleluya. Hay poder en Cristo. Aleluya. Gloria al Señor. Bendito Dios. Gloria al Señor, aleluya. Gloria a Jesús. Hay poder en la sangre de Cristo. Bendito es el nombre de Jesús. Bendito es el nombre de nuestro Señor Jesucristo, aleluya. Gloria al Señor. Bendito Dios, aleluya. Gloria a Jesús. Le damos la gracia al Señor en este viernes precioso, este viernes sostenido soleado que nos ha dado el Señor en este día, ¿verdad? Gloria a Jesús, un día precioso, un día soleado, un día caliente, hermoso, gloria a Jesús. La Biblia dice que tenemos que darle gracias a Dios por todo y eso es lo que estamos haciendo en este momento. Le estamos dando gracias al Señor por este día, por este día que le ha permitido, bendito Dios, que estemos aquí una vez más en su casa de oración, gloria a Jesús, aquí en el 1938 de Daily Avenue, a traer a ustedes palabra de Dios, palabra de aliento, bendito Dios, aleluya, porque Dios te ama, Cristo te ama, Cristo, Cristo ama a esta comunidad, Cristo ama a cada persona que vive en este barrio. Dios ama a cada persona que está escuchando este mensaje. Dios te ama, Cristo te ama, gloria a Jesús. Y le ha placido que estemos nosotros aquí en este día para predicarte a ti las buenas nuevas de salvación para que tú puedas escuchar palabra de aliento, palabra que pueda llegar a tu alma, que pueda llegar a tu corazón, una palabra, gloria a Jesús, de parte de Dios, aleluya, gloria a Jesús, porque la palabra que está en la Biblia, son palabras del Señor, amén, gloria a Jesús, y estamos aquí para que tú puedas escucharla, ahí sentado donde tú estás, Gloria a Jesús, aleluya, gloria al Señor, bendito sea el Señor, mi nombre es Yocasta Durán, gloria a Jesús, aleluya, gloria al Señor, nuestros pastores, Maico y Generosa Durán, gloria al Señor, aleluya, y estamos aquí en este día para que tú puedas escuchar lo que Dios tiene para ti, gloria a Jesús, amén. Voy a hacer una oración antes de empezar a leer las santas escrituras, gloria a Jesús. Amén, Padre, en el nombre poderoso de Jesús de Nazaret. Venimos delante de tu presencia, Padre, dándote la honra, la gloria, la alabanza, porque solamente tú te la mereces, mi Dios amado. Gracias te damos, Señor, porque tú has permitido, Padre, que estemos aquí, Señor, una vez más. Hoy día, viernes, junio. 10 del 2022 aquí Señor Dios mío a predicar tu palabra a toda criatura Señor Dios mío Padre te pedimos en esta hora Señor que tú prepares los corazones Señor que tú prepares los corazones y el ambiente de este lugar Señor que seas tú teniendo el control de todo que sea tus ángeles Señor Dios mío administra administrando a cada vida Señor amado para que yo pueda, Señor Dios mío, aceptar tu palabra en esta tarde, Señor amado. Hasta mí que levantamos, echamos fuera todo lo que no es tuyo. Cualquier oposición que quiera impedir que tu bendición fluya en esta tarde, Señor amado. Gracias te damos, Señor, en el nombre de Jesús. Amén y amén, gloria al Señor. Gloria a Jesús. Y le voy a decir lo, lo, el, los horarios de nuestro servicio. Los viernes estamos aquí para el culto de oración de 6 a 7 de la noche, aquí en el condado del Bronx, ¿verdad? Eh, tenemos culto también los domingos 
de 12 a 1 y media la escuela dominical están todos ustedes invitados para que vengan a aprender y a escuchar y a hacer preguntas el estudio de la palabra del señor también eh, se estudia la palabra los martes y los jueves de 10 de la mañana en adelante si usted no trabaja puede venir también gloria a jesús a nutrirse con la palabra del señor gloria al señor aleluya Nuestros pastores van a estar aquí a recibirlo con, con, con los brazos abiertos. Pregunta por la pastora generosa Durán y ella lo va a recibir con un abrazo bien bonito. Amén, gloria a Jesús. Le voy a leer ahora la porción de los versículos que el Señor me entregó para ustedes en esta tarde. Amén, porque lo que nosotros decimos aquí es de parte del Señor, no es de parte de nosotros. Nosotros oramos. Y le pedimos al Señor que sea Él poniendo la palabra en nuestros labios y que no permita que nada, nada salga de nuestros labios si no es dirigido por su Santo Espíritu. So aquí vamos a leer, si usted está en su casa y tiene una Biblia, puede abrirlo en el libro de Romanos. Romanos capítulo 10, de los versículos 9 al 10. Romanos capítulo 10, de los versículos del 9 al 10, amén, y la palabra de Dios se lee en el nombre del Padre, del Hijo, del Espíritu Santo, amén. Dice así, que si confesares con tu boca que Jesús es el Señor y creyeres en tu corazón que Dios le levantó de los muertos, serás salvo, porque con el corazón se cree para justicia, pero con la boca se confiesa para salvación, se lo voy a leer una vez más, bendito Dios. Dice así en el versículo 9 de Romanos capítulo 10, que si confesares con tu boca que Jesús es el Señor y creyeres en tu corazón que Dios le levantó de los muertos, serás salvo. Porque con el corazón se cree para justicia pero con la boca se confiesa para salvación, gloria a Jesús, gloria al Señor, dice verdad, que si tú confesares, eso es lo que los principios que dicen ese versículo, verdad, que si confesares, y, y si tú buscas la palabra confesar en la Biblia, confesar significa o es manifestar un sentimiento, cuando tú confiesas algo, tú estás manifestando un sentimiento. Gloria al Señor. Amén. Gloria a Jesús. Significa aceptar una declaración. Gloria al Señor. O establecer una relación legal mediante un contrato. Entonces, cuando tú confiesas, ¿verdad? Con tus labios que Jesús es el Señor. Nosotros como humanos, tú como humano estás recibiendo, tú estás declarando, tú estás confirmando que Cristo es real. Amén. Esa es la conf confesión que tú estás haciendo, tú estás creyendo en tu corazón, tú estás confesando que Jesús es real. Estamos aceptando la creencia de la palabra del Señor. Estamos aceptando lo que dice la Biblia. Gloria al Señor. Eso es confesar. Gloria a Jesús. Por eso te dice en ese versículo que si confesares con tu boca que Jesús es el Señor y creyeres en tu corazón que Dios le levantó de los muertos, serás salvo. Gloria a Jesús. Y ahí eso se explica solo, gloria al Señor. Tú primero tienes que confesarlo, porque a veces nos preguntamos, decimos, pero ¿por qué tenemos que confesar a Jesucristo? Si ya yo lo creo, yo creo que Él es el Hijo de Dios. Yo ya lo acepté en mi corazón. Es importante que tú lo confieses. Es importante que tú tengas un contrato con nuestro Señor Jesucristo. Es necesario es importante que tú lo confieses con tus labios, gloria al Señor, porque con eso estamos aceptando la Deidad de Dios, estamos aceptando que Jesús es el Hijo de Dios, estamos aceptando que Jesús, gloria al Señor, fue enviado aquí por su Padre para que tú puedas recibir salvación, tú ve, con esa palabrita confesar, mira lo que viene en el paquete, es mucho de 
el paquete que viene, por eso es que es importante que tú confieses que Jesús es el Señor, que tú lo creas en tu corazón para que tú puedas ser salvo. Gloria al Señor. Estamos aceptando, declarando esas, esas, esa palabra, confesando, estamos aceptando que Jesús es el Salvador del mundo. Gloria a Jesús, aleluya. En esa, en esa manifestación que tú estás haciendo, en esa declaración que tú estás haciendo, al mismo tiempo se está produciendo en tu corazón, se está produciendo en tu alma, se está produciendo en tu, en tu cuerpo una convicción, se está eh, manifestando en tu vida un arrepentimiento, porque cuando tú confiesas con tus labios que Jesús es el Señor, en ese momento tú estás, gloria al Señor, reconciliándote con el Padre, en ese momento, gloria al Señor, está habiendo una, un arrepentimiento en tu vida, gloria al Señor, aleluya, porque todas estas cosas pasan, porque esto no es emoción, porque el Espíritu Santo viene a tu vida y te marca. Porque el Espíritu Santo viene y te sella. Y el Señor dice, esa es propiedad mía. Y solamente tú siendo esa confección, todos esos acontecimientos están ocurriendo en tu vida. Están ocurriendo en tu alma. Está ocurriendo en tu corazón, gloria al Señor. Por eso que es importante, así como dice en el versículo 9, que si confesare con tu boca que Jesús es el Señor y creyere en tu corazón que Dios le levantó de los muertos, será salvo. Y mira lo que dice en el 10, porque con el corazón se cree para justicia, pero con la boca se confiesa para la salvación. Esta importancia de tú confesarlo con tu boca, gloria al Señor, porque tú no estás confesando para salvación, para que tú puedas ser salvo a través de Jesucristo, gloria al Señor, aleluya. Bendito Dios, la Biblia dice que la fe viene por el oír y el oír la palabra de Dios. Por eso es importante que tú escuches la palabra de Dios. Por eso es importante que tú le pongas atención a lo que estamos diciendo en esta tarde. Por eso que es importante que el Señor te dice en esta tarde que le abra su corazón para que Él pueda entrar a tu vida y para que pueda haber un arrepentimiento, para que pueda haber una convicción, para que pueda haber una salvación. Porque el Señor te quiere salvar tu alma en esta tarde, gloria al Señor, aleluya. Te presento al Hijo de Dios, te presento a Jesucristo, te presento al Salvador del mundo, gloria al Señor. Para que tú puedas confesarlo así como yo lo hice, gloria a Jesús, como tu Salvador personal. Ven a los pies de Jesucristo, te presento a mi Salvador en este día. Te presento a Jesucristo, el Hijo de Dios, para que tú lo confieses y para que tú puedas ser un Hijo de Dios, gloria al Señor, para que tú puedas ser salvo, bendito Dios, aleluya. Gloria al Señor. Ahí en Mateo, Jesús dijo, gloria al Señor, en el libro de Mateo, capítulo 10, de los versículos 32 al 33, a cualquiera pues que me confiese delante de los hombres, yo también le confesaré delante de mi Padre que está en los cielos, y a cualquiera que me niegue delante de los hombres, yo también le negaré delante de mi Padre que está en los cielos. Y eso está clarito, si tú niegas a Jesucristo en este día, si tú no lo aceptas en tu corazón, si tú no lo confiesas, gloria al Señor, desafortunadamente, Él te va a negar delante de su Padre allá en el cielo, y su Padre es Dios, gloria al Señor. Hoy es el día de salvación, hoy es el día para que tú, gloria a Jesús, le ponga atención a estas palabras, 
a estas palabras que son poderosas, a estas palabras que son de salvación, a estas palabras que son un 911 para tu vida espiritual, gloria al Señor. Confianza a Jesucristo para que puedas ser salvo. Yo te pido en esta hora, yo te insto en esta hora que tú confieses a Jesucristo para que tú puedas ser salvo. Cree en tu corazón que Dios le levantó a los muertos y tú serás salvo, te lo garantizo. Te lo garantizo porque la palabra de Dios se vive y eficaz y más cortante que una espada de doble filo. La palabra del Señor es real. La palabra de Dios es cierto. La Biblia dice que el cielo y la tierra pasará, mas su palabra no pasará. Si tú niegas a Jesucristo, si tú endureces tu corazón, si tú encierras tus oídos a lo que a lo que estamos hablando en esta tarde, desafortunadamente, así como tú cierras tus oídos y tus ojos, así va a ser nuestro Señor Jesucristo delante del Padre allá en el cielo. Gloria al Señor. Si tú lo ignoras así como lo estás haciendo ahora, Él también te va a negar, Él también te va a ignorar, gloria al Señor. Gloria al Señor, en cierta ocasión Él dijo, no todo el mundo que me dice el Señor, Señor, entrará al reino de los cielos, sino aquel que hace la voluntad de mi Padre, que está en los cielos. Solamente la persona que aceptan y confiesan a Jesucristo en su corazón se apartan del pecado y caminan de acuerdo a su palabra, entonces eso será salvo. Pero es importante que tú des el primer paso, es importante que tú lo confieses, así como dice Romanos capítulo 9, que si confesares con tu boca que Jesús es el Señor y creyere en tu corazón, que Dios le levantó de los muertos, será salvo. Porque con la boca se confiesa para justicia. Y con el corazón, gloria al Señor, se cree para salvación. Gloria a Jesús, aleluya. Te invito ahora en esta hora, te insto en esta hora que acepte a mi Señor, que acepte a Jesucristo si tú quieres ser salvo. Que lo confiese, gloria al Señor, para que cuando ese día venga, Él no te niegue a ti. Porque así como tú lo niegas aquí en la tierra, así Él te va a negar allá en el cielo. Dice el Señor, aleluya. Es tu decisión. ¿Qué tú vas a hacer? Es tu decisión. ¿Qué vas a hacer tú? ¿Qué tú vas a hacer? ¿Vas a ignorar la voz de Dios en esta tarde? ¿Para poder estar en los placeres de este mundo? ¿Vas a seguir haciendo lo que tú estás haciendo? Porque el alcohol ni la droga te van a llevar a ti al cielo. Y no te estoy juzgando, sino que te estoy hablando por la palabra de Dios. El alcohol no te va a llevar al cielo. Las drogas no te van a llevar al cielo. El sexo desordenado no te va a llevar al cielo. Los adulterios y las fornicaciones no te va a llevar al cielo. Sino que en ese día el Señor te va a negar delante de su Padre de parte de Dios. Aleluya. Gloria al Señor. No rechaces el Evangelio de Jesucristo, no lo rechaces. No rechaces al Hijo de Dios, no lo rechaces. Jesús dijo, yo soy el camino y la verdad y la vida, y nadie viene al Padre si no es por mí. La Biblia dice que todo aquel que en él creyere no será avergonzado, tú no vas a ser no vas a ser avergonzado si tú aceptas a Jesucristo en tu corazón. No permita que el diablo, Satanás y su demonio te engatusen y te engañen con los vicios y con los placeres de este mundo. Porque el corazón de nosotros se endurece, ¿verdad? Porque lo que quiere esta carne es tomar, fumar y pachanguear y bailar. Queremos hacer todo lo que está contrario de la palabra del Señor. Y nos dejamos llevar por esa voz que nos dicen, sigue tomando y, y dile a esa loca que se callen. Aquí hay ángeles del cielo protegiéndonos a nosotras y repartiendo todo lo que estamos diciendo. Porque fue Dios que nos mandó a predicar. 
Miren cuánto, cuánta tragedia está aconteciendo. Mira esa niña que estaba estudiando en su sala, estaba estudiando por un examen de ciencia allá en Queens y la mataron una bala, una bala se la pasó y la mató y ella estaba en su departamento. Se murió al instante. No permita que una bala ni nada te lleve de aquí sin aceptar a Jesucristo. No permita que el diablo te coma tu mente. Es palabra de Dios que estamos hablando. Y no me digas que tú no lo puedes hacer, porque tú sí puedes dejar esa porquería, porque yo era la primera que con una botella de vino todos los días, yo tenía que tomarme mi copa de, 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 de vino todos los días y lo viernes especialmente me tomó otra botella gloria al Señor con mi cigarrillo bendito Dios pero Cristo cuando vino a mi vida me quitó el vino, me quitó el alcohol me quitó los cigarrillos, me quitó la droga me quitó todo eso y me limpió para que yo pueda hacer un testimonio vivo para que las personas que me conocen vean que Cristo es poderoso y cambia y transforma bendito Dios, aleluya hay poder en Cristo él te puede cambiar a ti si así como me cambió a mí. Él puede quitarte ese vicio del alcohol así como me lo quitó a mí. Él te puede quitar esa vanidad así como me la quitó a mí. Porque Él es el Todopoderoso y nada es imposible para Dios. Cuando Él viene a tu vida y el Espíritu Santo te sella, hay una transformación en tu vida. Tú piensas dejar las cosas de este mundo, no te interesan ya. Tú lo que quieres leer la Biblia y vivir de acuerdo a la palabra de Dios. Y muchos dicen, pero hermana, hay muchos cristianos que yo conozco que están peores que yo. Pero por eso es que la Biblia dice, puesto los ojos en Jesús. Porque nosotros todos somos pecadores. Y le fallamos a Dios porque estamos en esta carne pecaminosa. Gloria a Jesús, no somos ángeles ni santos. Pero tenemos un Dios todopoderoso que con oración y sometimiento, Él nos cuida y nos guarda del pecado. Si tú te sometes al Señor, el Señor te transforma y te cambia. No te dejes llevar porque un cristiano dio mal testimonio del Señor. Un cristiano pisoteó la sangre de Cristo. Y ahora tú piensas que todos los cristianos somos así. No todos los que están en la iglesia son. Ni todos los que son están sino los que han tenido realmente un encuentro con Cristo. La Biblia dice, si me amáis, guarda mi mandamiento. Si tú realmente amas a Dios, tú vas a guardar los mandamientos del Señor. ¿Y cuáles son los mandamientos del Señor? La Biblia. La Biblia. Porque yo leía la Biblia con mi copa de vino. Y después decía, eso no importa porque Jesucristo tomaba vino. Pero si tú empiezas a leer profundamente las Escrituras, gloria al Señor, tú te vas a dar cuenta, bendito Dios, que el vino que se tomaba era un vino fermentado que no tenía alcohol. Pero muchos quieren ponerle alcohol porque quieren seguir en su poca vergüenza. Quieren tener un pie en el mundo y quieren tener un pie en el Evangelio. Así no se puede hacer. Porque cuando el Señor transforma una vida, la transforma de verdad, no a media. Y si y tú realmente amas a Dios y tú realmente dices que tú tienes a Dios en tu corazón, en tu, tú vas a querer, a complacerlo a Él. Gloria al Señor, no a tu carne. Porque... Se entiende que la carne traicionera y la carne, que es el cuerpo de uno, le llama la atención todas las cosas de este mundo. 
porque este mundo ofrece muchas cosas buenas en la vista del hombre, ¿verdad que sí? Pero cuando tú te metes y empiezas a leer la palabra del Señor, te vas a dar cuenta, gloria al Señor, que las cosas que se le ven bien a los humanos están en contra de la palabra del Señor. Por eso que es importante leer la Biblia. Por eso que es importante que tú le pidas a Dios, Señor Padre, dame la revelación de tu palabra. Ayúdame a entender tu palabra, yo quiero ser obediente a ti. Porque es una lucha constantemente que vamos a tener cuando tú confiesas al Señor con tu boca y tú lo aceptas en tu corazón y viene el Espíritu Santo y te sella y viene tú a ser propiedad de Dios. Ahí viene el diablo a declararte guerra a ti. Se te va a virar, si tienes esposa, se te va a virar la esposa. Si tienes hijos, los hijos se te van a virar. La economía se te va a dañar todo, porque eso son pruebas que Dios permite para que tú tengas fe en Él. Empiezan las pruebas. Empieza el diablo que el Señor lo reprenda a molestar a tu familia, pero ahí es que tú empiezas a buscar a Dios y confiar en el Señor. Confiar en Él y ponerle toda la carga a Él para que Él pueda obrar en tu vida. Gloria al Señor. En cierta ocasión, gloria a Jesús, el Señor probó a Abraham. Abraham era un siervo de Dios, un creyente, un varón de Dios, un temeroso de Dios. Pero el Señor quiso probar a Abraham a ver cuán, cómo, qué tanto amaba a Dios. Y le dijo, vete y sacrificame a tu hijo, tu único hijo, dice la Biblia, el hijo de la promesa. Pero él quería tanto al Señor que fue a crecer sacrificarlo y cuando estaba a punto de sacrificarlo vino una voz del cielo y dijo Abraham no no lo haga porque ahora me doy cuenta que tú sí me amas el Señor va a probar nuestros corazones no para que le hagamos daño a nuestros niños o a nuestra familia sino para ver qué tenemos realmente en nuestro corazón si realmente tenemos nosotros a Dios primero y después el resto de último, porque el Señor quiere tener, quiere que tú lo tengas primero en tu corazón porque cualquier cosa que tú pongas primero que Dios viene a ser una idolatría en tu vida por eso el Señor te manda en este día que lo acepte el Señor te manda a ti que acepte a su Hijo amado a Jesucristo porque así como lo dice en el versículo 9, que si confesares con tu boca que Jesús es el Señor y creyeres en tu corazón que Dios le levantó de los muertos, serás salvo. Porque con el corazón se cree para justicia, pero con la boca se confiesa para salvación. El altar está abierto. Si tú quieres aceptar a Jesucristo en esta hora, ven aquí que vamos a orar por ti. Para que tú vengas y lo confieses, gloria al Señor, y lo aceptes en tu corazón, para que venga el, el Espíritu Santo y te pueda sellar y tú puedas ser parte de la familia del Señor, aleluya. Esto es para valientes nada más, porque solamente los valientes que pueden a, aguantar, aguantar, solamente los valientes pueden aguantar. Te hago un llamado en esta hora para que puedas aceptar a Cristo. Gloria al Señor. Gloria al Señor. Un llamado en esta hora si tú quieres aceptar a Jesucristo. No vas a ser avergonzado si aceptas a Jesucristo. Ahí lo dice en la Biblia. Gloria al Señor. Que todo aquel que, que, que en él creyere no será avergonzado. La puerta todavía está abierta. Todavía tienes tiempo para recibirlo como tu salvador. No permita que se cierre la puerta porque Cristo está a la puerta. En el tiempo de Noé, Noé predicaba y predicaba y predicaba de salvación y la gente se burlaba de él. Se burlaban de él. Pero cuando 
se cerró la puerta y vino el diluvio. Entonces ellos se lamentaron, se ahogaron todo y solamente se salvaron siete. No permita que Cristo venga y tú te quedes aquí. El Señor está en la puerta y te está haciendo un llamado en esta hora. Ven a Cristo para que tú puedas obtener salvación. Que Dios le bendiga, que Dios le guarde y con nosotros la evangelista del Señor, Sunilda Vargas. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you praise, God, because you're the honor of all, Lord. You deserve all the praise. You deserve all the honor. We thank you for this beautiful afternoon, Lord Jesus. We thank you for every member of the community who's listening to this word, Lord. It is not a coincidence that we are out here today, this beautiful afternoon, and everyone is outside because it's a purpose done for, by you already. So they could listen to these beautiful words that you have for them. We thank you for your mercy, God. We thank you for everyone that has the ears to hear and mouth to confess that you are the Son of God. Thank you, Lord. Uh, bless my sister, my, my, uh, the Lord bless her abundantly for those words that she just gave you. And I, um, like she was saying, that every uh, person must confess with their mouth that Jesus is Lord. And only like that, you will be saved. Because with your heart, with your mouth, you confess. Hallelujah. And I'm going to speak to you about this king. This king Ahab, who was a king back then in the old testament he was one of the king from um israel but what happened he got manipulated manipulated by his wife the lord told his people israelite not to get involved with any stranger with any idols any women out of their race because they're going to be departed from the word of god and that's exactly what happened with ahab hallelujah Glory to you, Jesus. And I'm going to read to you from the book of First King. Glory to Jesus. We worship you, God. You are an amazing God, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this book says, the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And first of King first, chapter 21 from verse 20 to 29 and i'm going to read this whole thing to you so you could understand what went on here and what happens when you have someone in the path of the lord and suddenly because there are people manipulating you there are people telling you no do not go and serve the lord let's go and have good times right now and we go later and convert ourselves let me tell you you don't know when the draft of god is going to fall up on your family when it's going to fall up on your head so do not listen to any manipulator who's trying to depart you from the word of God. And the book of Jeremiah chapter 17 says, Cursed is the man who departs from the Lord. Cursed is the one who makes all the listen and make them depart from the word of God. So do not allow any man, anything, any idol depart you from the word of God. Because you're ready. Those who already depart from the word of God, you already had touched the word of God. And the word says, your punishment is even harder than the one that has not tasted his words. So have that in mind, people. Those who are departed from the word of God, because this community has been chosen by the word of God, by the Lord Jesus to come and serve him. And spirit and truth, but because of the things of the world, you guys have departed from him. And thinking that the things that you're doing in your flesh are better than the word of God. And you know in your in your heart that it's not so. You're not pleasing God by doing the things you're doing. Come back to the Lord. Listen to this. First of King chapter 21, from verse 20. The name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So Ahab said to Elijah, Oh, I found me. You found me, oh my enemy. And he answered, I found you because you have sold yourself 
to do evil in the sight of the Lord. Behold, I will bring calamity on you. I will take away your prosperity and will cut off from Ahab every male of Israel, both bond and free. I will make your house like a house of Herobon, the son of Naboth, and like the house of Basha, the son of Ahab, because of the pro provocation which with which you have provoked my, my anger and made Israel sin. And concerning the Jezebel, the Lord also spoke, saying, The dogs should eat Jezebel by the wall, and the Hesra, the dogs should eat whoever belongs to Ahab and dies in the city, and the birds and the, of the air should eat whoever dies on the field. But there is one, there was one like Ahab, there was no one like Ahab who saw himself to do wickedness in the sight of the Lord because Jezebel, his wife, stirred up and he behaved very abominably in the following idols according to all that Amaronites had done whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. So it was when Ahab heard those words that he tore his clothes and put the sackcloth in his body and fasted and lay on the sackcloth and went about mourning. And then the soul of the Lord came to Elijah the Atibai and saying, See how Ahab has humbled himself before me? Because he has humbled himself before me, I will not bring calamity in his days. And the days of his son will bring calamity into his house. Amen. What does this mean? So Ahab, like I said before, was one of the kings that caused the, the most of our nation in God's eyes. Because he went, he departed from the Lord. Just like us we do sometimes, we depart from the Lord, we come to God, we see his glory in us, we see his promises fulfilled in our lives, but when it comes temptation, when it comes manipulation, we depart from the word of God. Because we feel better feeling good in the flesh than to be obedient to the word of God and obey the, the, the Holy Spirit, not your flesh. The flesh is the, the most deceiving thing. The flesh is the number one enemy of anyone. The Bible said that's your number one enemy. You're going to sleep with it. You, go, you wake up with her. You have to repent. You have to all, all the time repent your flesh. Because it's a deceiver. So what happened to Ahab? So his wife Jezebel, the Bible said that she was a wicked queen. She was just about the uh, idolatrous. She called herself prof prophet, a, a prophet, but she's a prophet of Baal, of Bella, of demons. And this is the wife of Ahab, the king, who was ruling in Israel, God's people. So God saw all these things. Of course, he was doing all this abomination because he was manipulated by Jezebel the wicked wife and this is what happened to us we have women we have a man we have we are idolatry we become idolatry in drugs in alcohol we we, we like to see things the lust of the eyes lust of the flesh and we become manipulated with all these things and god prophesied to this king that he was going to destroy him that he was going to banish him. And he also said that he was going to make his wife be eaten by dogs. That everyone's going to see him. But Ahab feared the Lord. He heard those words. And the Bible says like I, I read here. So he heard those words. And he tore down his clothes. And put a sack or sackcloth in his body. And he started fasting. This guy, this king recognized that he was seen in front of God's eyes. That he was being abomination to the Lord by the things that he was doing, by his action. But the good thing about this was that he repented. He 
Rick recognized that he pulled aside his wife just about for that moment because it wasn't for long either. But the good thing is that God saw that. The Bible said a humble and humiliated heart he will never reject. So Ahab humbled himself. He put away his king garment and put a sackcloth and fasted and mourned for his city. Hallelujah. And God likes that. God likes that. God likes a, a humble heart who comes, God bless you, who comes and says, yes, I'm a sinner. Yes, Lord, I commit a sin against you. Yes, Lord, I am a sinner. Forgive me. Forgive me, Lord. He is a merciful God. That's why we are here giving you the word of God because this is not the end. As there is bread, there is hope. Come. Come and serve your Lord, God, your maker. There is still time. He wants to forgive your sins. The Bible said that he would not kill the iniquity. If when they come with a humble heart, hallelujah. So come to the Lord. Just the way Ahab, this wicked king, married to Jezebel, the manipulator, the wicked woman who killed all God's prophets, but left one, Elijah, um, among others. But Elijah was the one giving the message in this story here, in this side of the Bible. Elisha went and get the message because of what is of God, nobody can kill it. Hallelujah. So there is time. There's chance for you people, community of a daily avenue. Just come and repent, just like King Ahab. He came and humbled himself. And he was not destroyed because God saw his heart. God saw his humility. God saw that he repented. And he admitted that he was in sin. When you're in sin, you cannot hide it. God knows your heart. You might hide it from men, but obviously you know your heart. You're not right with the Lord. We sin by, by looking. We sin by speaking words. We sin by speaking in our hearts and our thoughts. God knows it all. And despite all this, he is merciful. God is merciful and he has mercy for you. The Bible said when, there, when there's no repentance, the sin carries on through second, third, and fourth generations. So you'll be the one to break those chains. Come to the Lord and break those chains. Don't let another generation to pass with this sin, with this uh, 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 wickedness life. Break those chains and don't let another generation or your family go through this, what you're going through. Because the Bible says that when you don't repent, it goes through the fourth generation with sin and chain and bondage. Break those bondage. Be the brave one. Come back to the Lord and repent. So your future family, your generation, doesn't have to go through this. Be the brave one. Hallelujah. Just like Ahab. He brought the chain right there. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then later on, listen what happened. Then a second of king, my Lord Jesus. My Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And in the second of king, chapter 9, in verse 30, this is what it says. Remember, in, in first of King, in chapter 21, it talks about Elisha said that the dust would eat Jezebel. But because Ahab repented, nothing happened to him. But the Bible also said that nothing will happen to him because he humbled himself, but it will be seen in his children, his family. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Second of Kings chapter 9 says, Now when Jez, um, Hezob had come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard it. And she painted her eyes and adorned her head and looked through the window. 
This is when we say that a Christian woman or a serving of God do not color the hair, do not put adorn in the hair, and, and also paint themselves. Because now it's that's like a mask in your face. Right here, just about that was the wicked witch in the second king, chapter nine. She was the one who was to he was to paint her, her face and provoke the prophets of God and make them fornicate with her. So this is the reason a Christian woman doesn't do these things because it's kind of simulating just about the manipulator. This is why we don't do these things because why would you want to cover your face with paints, with makeup when God made your natural? The natural beauty is more beautiful than anything else because when you put makeup on your face, you're covering the nature of God in you. It's like saying God didn't make me right. God didn't make me the way I wanted to. He, I, I have a mistake. This is what you're saying. Hallelujah. So it says here, then has to enter the gate and she said, it is peace, secret, matter or master. And he looked up at the window and said, who is in my side? Who? So, so two or three animals looked out at him. Then he said, throw her down. So they threw her down and saw her blood scatter. Her blood scatter on the wall and the horses in the tremble and her foot under the footstep. My God. And when he had done it, he ate and drank and he said, go now. See this accursed woman and bury her. For she is a king's daughter, hallelujah. And they went and buried her. But when they found no more of her than the skull and the feet and the palm of her hand, hallelujah. Here we see, like the prophet Elisha had prophesied in front of Ahab when he humbled himself, but not just about. He prophesied that the dogs would eat his wife. And right here in the second of King, a chapter later, the dogs ate Jezebel, hallelujah. The dogs ate Jezebel. So the word of God will never come back void. What the word of God says, it will happen. You that have been departed from the word of God, come back to the Lord. Don't let your generation, next, next generation, go through the same thing you're going through right now, to sorrow. You know inside you, you know deep inside you, you are not pleasing the Lord. You know that you are doing right now, it's just temporary pleasure. That's what you want to do, my God. Hallelujah. Don't let your sorrow pass through the next generation, my God. Hallelujah. God, God will take revenge. God will take revenge. His word will not come back boy, my God. He wants to change the Bible said that he will change the stony heart to a, a, a heart of flesh. And that he will wash you clean. And remove the iniquity out of you. And the idolatry. Hallelujah. My God, Jesus. My Lord. You're an amazing God, Jesus. Do like that, like that man. That, 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 that um, blind man. And the, the, that talks about in the in the book of Mark, the book of Mark, chapter 10, 46 says, Now he came to Jericho, as he went into Jericho with his disciple, in a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat in the room begging. And when he heard it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then they warned, then many warned him to stop and quit that. 
spoke, he cried even louder and more, Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood up still and commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man, saying to him, Be good cheer, raise up, and he's calling, calling you. And he threw aside his garment, and he rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, that I may receive sight. Then Jesus said to him, Go your way. Your faith has made you well. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, I immediately he received his sight. And follow Jesus on the road. Hallelujah. What does this mean? God wants to take away. And we're talking about not just physical blindness. But also spiritual blindness that we have. When we live in the world. When we don't understand this. The spiritual welfare that we have. We think that we just see that. But we see it. That's it. We have spiritual bottle. God wants to remove that bondage of your eyes. So you can see the spiritual Bottles that we have, the spiritual world is more real than what you think. When you see in the natural eye, this is not it. It is a bottle ten and nine against evil and good. And the evil is winning in this world because it's the prince of darkness and people following darkness. The Bible says, if my people call out my name and rebuke of the sin, I'll hear them from heaven and I'll hear the land. But nobody wants to repent of the sin. They still want to do wicked things regardless of what their eyes see. The other wickedness revealed in front of you. And we're still not calling out the name of God to heal our land. And this is why there's so much darkness in this world. Because people are going after darkness. The light of the world is Jesus and people are rejecting it. Just like this blind man who received sight, come and call out to the name of the Lord Jesus so you could receive his promises, so you could be with this blind uh, 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 spirit of blindness removed from your eyes. And I bet once you do that and you see all these spiritual welfare that is around you, you're going to repent. Because when you see the truth, the truth is not what you see with your eyes. It's what you see with your spiritual eyes. That is the real truth because eternal. That is the fight that it is here. We eternal life. The devil was cut down from heaven. And he's the ruler of this earth. And he wants you to be in darkness. He wants you to be in darkness. He wants to see you burning in hell with his eyes. Hallelujah. He knows exactly where he was throwing out from. He doesn't want you to go and enjoy the beautiful flowers that are in heaven. The, there's, no, there's no sun. I mean, there's only sun. There's no darkness. There's no darkness in heaven. The Bible says that the glory of God shines in everywhere. Hallelujah. There's no darkness in heaven. So the devil doesn't want you to experience that beautiful thing that he came out from. And he's no longer come back in there because he's the wicked one. And this is why he wants to depart you from the word of God. He doesn't want you to hear these things. Because he wants to see you burning in hell. He is a deceiver. He just came to kill, lie, and destroy. For my God came to give you life and abundantly, the Bible says. He will give you beautiful ashes. He want to take away that burden that you have in your shoulder. He doesn't want to, you to be living in bondage, as the Bible says. He want to take away, away all the iniquity out of you. He already paid the price for you. He paid for you. With death. He became cursed so you could be blessed. Hallelujah. My Lord Jesus became a curse so you could be blessed. So you don't have to be going through all this hardship that we live in this world thinking that this is it. No, it's not, people. It's not. This is temporary. Stop being deceived. We give you the word every week here. The Lord has been so good to you that we've been here like five Fridays already. Because God wants you to hear this word. 
Stop wasting your time and think that we perish later on. All the pressure of the flesh, the eyes. To say no to any of those things and come to Jesus. He loves you. He loves you. Wants to give you the peace that surpasses every understanding. My Lord, thank you, Lord Jesus. And knowing that he's for you, not against you. The devil wants you to think that. The devil wants you to think that there's no forgiveness for you. It's a life from hell. As long, just like Ahab, the wicked king. The Bible says he was the most wicked king in the Bible. Because the abomination that he committed with his wife Jezebel. And yet he humbled himself. And God saw that and forgave him. He can forgive you too. Don't start... Stop listening to the voice of hell or that liar voice telling you that there's no forgiveness for you. No matter what you have done, if you commit adultery, you commit a sin, you commit a, if you're prostitution, alcohol, addiction, or drug, no matter you break all those chains, you don't need to be alone. You don't need to go be on the corner, be hiding, thinking that there's no help for you. Yes, Jesus has help. Jesus is your medicine. Come and get a shot of the Holy Spirit in your life and you see how everything is going to be wiped out from you. He is your medicine for everything. He will heal you. He will heal you. There's no illness. There's no bandage that the Lord Jesus can come and take away from you. He already did it for you. The Bible says by his stripe he will heal. That he walked like a slaughter. Like a sheep to the slaughter, walking down to his death, and he open, he didn't open his mouth for you and for me. Because if the Lord will say something or, or complain, you think you will have anything to do with this? No, because he would have felt, but he never felt. He didn't make any sin, but yet he he died as a sinner. He died as a criminal for you and for me. Understand this, people. No longer you are a sinner when you come to the Lord, to the Lord Jesus. With every sin you make, He will wipe it clean. He will wipe all the sins for you, and nobody could tell you you are a sinner once you come to the Lord Jesus and we cleanse you with His blood. That's why He died for you, for me. He cleanses us all. So we have a, 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 a lawyer. He is our, our counselor. He is our defender. He's your friend. Hallelujah. He will give you beautiful ashes, people. Stop doubting on the Lord. Come and try him. Come and try him. Instead of trying these drugs and alcohol and fornication and adultery and looking with your eyes and, and, and imagination things in your head and, and performing in the nighttime, get away from all that. You're just getting yourself more deep into the deeper hell. Hallelujah. Come and try Jesus. Come and try Jesus. Come and try Jesus. Come and try him. Come and try the Lord Jesus. He wants to save you. Let me read this to you from uh, the book of Isaiah. Um, chapter 43. Listen what he says, my God. Chapter 53, 43 in Isaiah from verse 1 to 3. For now, thus says the Lord, who created you, O Jacob? And he who formed me, O Israel, free or not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine, the Lord says. You hear people? You are mine, the Lord says. My God. You just got to come humbly to him and ask him to come into your heart. And you will be his, my God. He already called you. You are mine. You are pressed. You, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you, the Bible says. And through the rivers, they should not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you should not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt for your ransom. Egypt and save your place. Hallelujah. Since you were precious in my sight, you have been honored, and I have loved you. Therefore, I will give you, I will give men for you and people for your life. Fear not, 
for I am with you. I will bring your descendants from the east and gather them from the west. And I will say to the north, give up, give up them. And on the south, do not keep them back. Hallelujah. The Lord will bring you, bring your family, bring everyone else. It just takes one person to come in. Just come in. Just come in. Bring this to render to the Lord Jesus. Just come to him. Like you said, humble heart, he will not reject. Come to the Lord Jesus. Who wants to receive the Lord Jesus in your heart? We are here. We are here. We can come and pray for you right now. Just come with your humble heart. We will pray for you. You want prayer? God, we, will we will come and pray for you. You want prayer? Come and pray. We will give you. You want to pray? We will pray for you, Mama. Come. We will pray for you. My sister's here. Come. We will pray for you. Do not reject the word of God. We are here for that to give prayers. We are not going to reject prayers. Come. We will pray for you. Come, you can Come, Mama. Come this way. Don't. You feel it? Your heart. You come in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, my Lord Jesus. The Bible says a humble heart, he will never reject it. He will never reject a humble heart. A humble heart, he will not reject. We still here, Mama, waiting for you. We want to pray for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I'm going to leave you with this. In the book of Numbers, chapter 6, from 24 to 26. May the May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shining upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. God bless you. Have a nice weekend. We will be going to be here until 7 o'clock. If you want prayer, we're going to be here. And you can come also to pray with us until 7 o'clock. God bless you. Nice weekend.